Hi, today we're going to talk about Mac Mini or MacBook. Which one should you get? Let's find out. Oh, this is uh, kind of heavy. Okay, so what we have here is a MacBook Pro Retina, late 2013 model. Um, I use this every day. Like, I really love this machine. It's a wonderful machine to use. Uh, but if you're gonna get a new one today, it's actually kind of pricey. Whereas the Mac Mini, it's sort of, um, this is like a poor man's Mac, you know? But I've always been a huge fan of these things because they are price efficient. Even if you have to pay uh, $500 for a Mac Mini, there is still this thing that this is very compact, you know, and all you have to do is like connect any keyboard to it, any mouse to it, any monitor. Like if you have an HDMI TV, you can definitely hook it up to this one. Like I use this on my smart TV, a 4K smart TV that I've got hooked up to my Mac Mini. And I got Plex on, I got all sorts of fun stuff on this thing still. I even edit some videos from time to time on my Mac Mini. It's that good. Simply put, because Final Cut Pro allows it for you to edit on these things. So, again though, you probably clicked on this video because you're wondering, should you get the MacBook or the, I, the I was going to say iPad, that's a whole different topic. <laughs> or should you get the Mac Mini? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm simply going to put like this. Um, obviously, the MacBook is a better option because it's a full package deal you know you have your keyboard built in you got a battery so it's portable you can use it wherever whenever so obviously this is the better option hands down okay no comparison this is the better option having said so it is expensive and you can't really replace anything on these things. And the Mac Mini, well, today you also can't change any of the configuration. This is a late 2012 model, I think. Uh, like on this thing, I can like change the hard drives, the memory cards. It's still very upgradable, except, you know, processors and the GPU is pretty lame and you can't replace that. But other than that, like this is, this is very, very price worthy. And if you're just, if you're, like, you know, a lot of these Apple stuff, they're kind of fancy. Like, does an iPhone really have to cost, you know, $1,000? Or is it more of a prestigious thing? You know, you have an iPhone, there is a bit of a luxury involved here. And I think it's the same thing with the MacBooks. And if you are mainly interested, as I was, when I first was going to purchase uh, a Mac computer, my, this is actually my first Mac computer, because I all I wanted to do is play around with GarageBand, and I wanted to play with Final Cut Pro. And this, this is all I could afford. And let me tell you, I <laughs> I used it for a lot of years and it, it really did do what it was supposed to do. It worked brilliantly. It still works brilliantly. And that was like five years ago, you know? So it's a great piece of machine. It really is. And it's gonna work a long time and you don't have to worry about getting like a battery when it when the battery dies because there aren't any batteries you just connect it you know to the power charger you connect it to whatever monitor you use and you will always have the option to just use it as a media center on your tv that's what i do these days because now i'm on the macbook but if i was just you know looking for the cheapest solution in order to edit videos or make music on GarageBand, uh or just get that that you know mac experience you know connected with my iphone i think this is a wonderful option but again it's not as portable as something as a laptop but there you have you know the whole uh laptop versus desktop thing this is a desktop now, even though it's quite small and portable this is actually a desktop hard to believe um if you're wondering like performance wise uh, the MacBooks are a bit faster. They usually have a dedicated graphics card if you go for the 15 inches, but the GPU on this, the built-in GPU and the processor on this, it's fast enough, especially for um, 
Apple's own software, like GarageBand and Final Cut Pro, you will have no issues with Final Cut Pro. It's not as fast and fluid, but I've edited uh, two full feature films on this thing, two hour movies on this thing. It was full HD though, but I did it. Um, you sort of just have to be very economical, but I'm gonna make a video about that in a different episode. So, um, having said so, you can see that I'm sort of leaning towards this, this thing. Now, how can I do that? If I'm saying that I have the MacBook and I'm still recommending this, it's because I think that Apple products in general are overpriced. And I think if you just, you're after the Mac experience and this is your first Mac, then this is a good way to start. If you just want to get to know Final Cut Pro and Logic or uh, GarageBand and you just want to get a feel for it without, you know, spending like, I don't know, $1,500, this is a good investment. And you will always be able to use it for something. So, definitely. That's, that's just my opinion anyway. So, I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions regarding your purchase, your thoughts, your worries, concerns... You know, just put it in a comment below and I'll get back to you. That's a promise. Take care. Okay, that was it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, see that like button, smash it. And I got some freakishly awesome videos coming up. Better subscribe so you don't miss a beat. I'll see you later. Peace.